This video will cover the most frequently asked questions for users just getting into a SOLIDWORKS simulation license. This web version will show websites and go into more detail on particular topics, and the written version will have a summary which you can access through a link in the description. The first topic is hardware. What hardware do we recommend? What is the best hardware to get for SOLIDWORKS simulation? These are the minimum requirements for running SOLIDWORKS, and this listing is constantly being updated online. These minimum requirements hold for SOLIDWORKS simulation as well. Also online is a listing of tested graphics cards. These workstation class graphics cards have the power to run SOLIDWORKS and render the many simulation results without glitches. Now let's get more detailed. If I'm buying a new computer, what sort of CPU should I buy? There are plenty of options, and some options are better than others for SOLIDWORKS simulation. The main SOLIDWORKS application is lightly threaded, meaning it runs mainly on a single processor core. However, SOLIDWORKS simulation is multi-threaded in many ways, from meshing to solving to viewing results. Because of this, we see time savings on multi-core machines. This graphic shows us solve time in an FEA study. As we increase the number of cores, we see a decrease in calculation time. However, we see diminishing returns as we increase the number of cores. This is why most simulation users have 4 to 8 physical cores. Since simulation is multi-threaded, should we hyper-thread our processor? No, we do not see much improvement in calculation time when we activate Intel's hyper-threading technology. In fact, it will cause tasks that only use one core, like SOLIDWORKS modeling, to now run slower. So if you are a user who will spend most of your day within SOLIDWORKS and simulation, I recommend turning off hyperthreading. Secondly, in all figures, we see the most time savings gains within the first four physical cores. Four fast CPUs are better than eight slow CPUs. Thus, clock rate is one of the most important things a simulation user can invest in. In that vein, should we overclock our processors? In general, no. Overclocking a system puts a computer at a higher risk of hardware problems. Only if the user will monitor and maintain their hardware does specializing a system like this make sense. The last major hardware investment is with RAM. For larger problems, RAM and CPU cache are important. The more RAM, the larger the problems we can solve. The more CPU cache, the better the performance. Now how large is too large? Is there some sort of metric for size of your model versus how much RAM you need? No, because the amount of RAM needed is reliant on the model and the simulation inputs. So work with your application engineer or account manager to properly size your RAM requirements. Now while storage space for files does not affect your simulation calculation time, having a solid state drive over a hard disk drive will save you time in other areas of SOLIDWORKS. Secondly, Simulation result files can get large, so having ample room to store them is necessary. The more storage space you can afford, the better. In summary, I don't recommend overclocking or hyperthreading solely for SOLIDWORKS simulation. And when investing in hardware, be sure to get an operating system, workstation, and workstation class graphics card that are tested through the SOLIDWORKS website. For the processor, clock rate is the most important investment followed by CPU cache and RAM. As of 2016, the software and the market make the numbers listed here reasonable recommendations. The second topic is licensing. What license should we get for SOLIDWORKS simulation? The SOLIDWORKS website describes the two main licensing schemes. The Solid Network License, or SNL, which can be installed on many computers, and the Standalone, which can only be installed on two, a work computer and a home computer. Standalone licenses come with a term licensing option, meaning you can either purchase the license outright or rent it for a period of time. If you are more interested in product matrices, for example, what is available in standard, professional, and premium packages, that information is also available on the SOLIDWORKS website or as another video and written series on the Go Engineer knowledge base or through your local application engineer and account manager. The final topic is on SOLIDWORKS simulation trials. You can request a trial license through your account manager or through the SOLIDWORKS website. Trials can be standalone installations on your computer or online trials through SOLIDWORKS.
I'm Shivani with Go Engineer, and thank you for watching this clip summarizing hardware recommendations, licensing options, and trial requests for SolidWorks simulation. If you have any other questions, call our office line or come visit us. Mm -hmm.